the Executive Director of the Catholic Academy of Bridgeport, and I am absolutely thrilled uh, to be able to help host this first in a series of web talks called Hometown Heroes. Um, normally, the host will be my current guest, which is uh, Tony Fox, but uh, we're sp uh, switching it up just a little bit today because unfortunately our guest um, alum was not able to make it due to a, 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 an emergency. Uh, at the last minute, so we are just going to switch it up a little bit. But Tony is an alum of our school and a current board member, so he has an awful lot to share. And I'm excited that we're going to have some some of our current students uh, on uh, tonight's talk, so that they can um, learn a little bit from you, and hopefully, you know, maybe we'll see some for, uh, future board members in in their ranks. Oh, yeah. um, just to let those of you who have joined us know, if you have any questions, we're going to be using the chat function tonight. So the little um, bubble icon at the bottom of your screen is an opportunity for you to ask questions um, that we will make sure Tony's looking at and so he can answer those questions as we go. I'll ask some questions too and, and kind of get us started. So I would love to just start with allowing Tony to introduce himself and, and a little bit about his background. Great, thank you Angela for the uh, great introduction. Um, again, my name is Tony Fox, uh, current board member. Um, currently I'm 23 years old um, and I attended St. Augustine um, currently known as the St. Augustine campus for the Catholic Academy of Bridgeport. Um, I graduated in 2010 um, with an amazing teacher by the name of Mrs. Donnelly. Um, she is on here right now, so hello, Mrs. Donnelly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went to St. Augustine um, from pre-K up until eighth grade. Um, St. Augustine is my home. Catholic Academy is my home. Um, I've had nothing but great experiences there. And after I graduated um, eighth grade, I went on to Fairfield Prep. And when I was at Fairfield Prep, I was a three-sport athlete. I played football, um, played basketball, and was the basketball manager. And I also um, did track and field. I threw the shot put and discus. So that was fun. Also ran 100 meters. Um, that's, you know, uh, but that was back in my prime <laughs> <laughs> and there was nothing really bad behind you or really good in front of you doing that you just wanted to be fit and healthy oh yeah good for oh, you yeah. <laughs> how how often do you see a football player running a hundred meters you know? right <laughs> right I'm impressed you know don't ask me what my ranking was but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't I'm impressed just on its merit thank you thank you um, so after doing all that, um, I also was involved in student government. Uh, that's something that I'm very passionate about. Um, I was exposed to, to student government first um, while I was at St. Augustine, where I was the president of the school. Um, I had a great vice president and, and staff, and I realized that, you know, wow, this is uh, great, you know, that I can make a direct impact um, on my community, you know, on the students that, that I was serving. Um, so at Fairfield Prep, I was also involved in student government uh, all four years. And my senior year, I was uh, the president of the school. Um, we had a great run. Um, I miss it dearly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so after all of that, I was awarded a football scholarship uh, to Fordham University, where I studied engineering physics. Um, I completed my degree in four years and graduated in 2018. Um, I actually had four concussions uh, because of football, so um, I decided to be safe <laughs> and ended my career early uh, due to my last concussion. Um, I was fortunate enough that Fordham was able to honor my scholarship and oh, allow me to finish my degree in engineering, um, and it worked out, you know. Um, <laughs> so after... I stopped playing football. I decided to get back into the student government role and the leadership role on campus. Um, in my senior year, I was elected as one of the presidents of the school. Um, that was a great time for me. I had a great staff again, um, and I was able to make an impact and just allow students' voices to be heard. Um, so I graduated in May of 2018, and like most, uh, young graduates, I was on the job market looking for a job. <laughs> and six months later, I landed a job at Hubble Heaters in Stratford, Connecticut, um, starting off as a manufacturing engineer. Um, after three months, I received a promotion uh, to, a to the mechanical engineering group. 
That's great. Um, so from January 2019 up until March of 2020, um, I served you know, there as an engineer, did some great projects, worked on government jobs, um, you know, had some big accounts uh, that I helped manage with a great staff. Um, but due to COVID-19, they had a round of layoffs in March. And unfortunately, um, I was laid off during that time. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, thank you. But it is okay. There's about 20 other million people in my boat. So right. I, don't, I don't feel lonely. <laughs> <laughs> and you said you have some, you have some things on the horizon too. Yes, yes, yes. I do have some things on the horizon. Um, very fortunate to um, actually receive a job offer. Um, oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, you know, that's, that's something that I'm very excited about. And I am in final stages with another company. So, you know, once nice. I receive a formal offer, I will then um, compare, you know, both of yeah. uh, the benefits and, you know, the whole package. That's a great position to be in. Um, yes, yes, yes. It'll be uh, good for you. It'll be great. So, looking forward to the next you know phase of my life and um, in my career as well. Um, while we're speaking about the next phase, uh, I also was just accepted into an MBA program. Oh, um, congratulations! Thank Where? you, uh, Regis University Jesuit nice. School in yes. Colorado. You know, I figured. Um, you know, I'll keep the Catholic thing going since I've... There you go. <laughs> it's been working for you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I will start that this fall and um, it'll be great. I assume that's online. You're not going to be commuting to it'll Colorado. Be <laughs> it'll be online, yes. Good. So we get to keep you. I, my selfish first response was, you're still going to be on the board, right? Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> this, will, this will only help and enhance... Oh, my, lovely. Good, my, good, good. My contributions. Excellent. Excellent. That's wonderful. That's a, that's a wonderful backstory. And I, I'd like to delve into it a little bit with you if I could. Um, so it sounds like a lot of the things that you learned that you loved came from some of your experiences at the, at the Catholic Academy of Bridgeport at St. Augustine, that you started to find that you loved working with student government, that you, you know, had a passion for sports. Um, so can you talk about maybe what your the biggest value that you feel that you gleaned from your time at St. Augustine? It would definitely be, um, to keep an open mind and, you know, really practice what you learn, you know, um, from, you know, my first days at St. Augustine, you know, in pre-K, first grade, um, you know, you begin to really learn, learn how to treat others, especially uh, given our, our environment at a, at a Catholic um, institution, you know, we really have the religion aspect in there to um, really serve as a great tool uh, for, for young students to find themselves and to, you know, just learn about morals. You know, mm -hmm. I think a big um, part in today's society, you know, those millennials, uh, <laughs> such as myself, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's a gap, um, I feel, in morality, you know, where, mm -hmm. where things are um, not as black and white as they used to be. You know, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. could go to court over anything now <laughs> and you can be wrong but still win a case <laughs> right right you know, so um, so integrity integrity being a big big part of what we do yeah correct correct um you know that and you know just just uh giving back you know to the community and paying it forward right you know um the teachers there are excellent you know they've always cared for their students um deeply mm -hmm. um, you know i still have dinners and lunches with Mrs. Donnelly, my eighth grade teacher, um, and I love her dearly to this day. Um, I know, you know, several other students keep in contact uh, with her and other faculty that they've, you know, previously had. So that just goes to show <clears throat> what, you know, the faculty does for the students and the impact that they have, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, is a great inspiration. You know, I've, I've never attended another school, but um, I highly doubt that there's a lot of teachers that, you know, are willing to day in and day out, give their yeah. full effort, um, you know, for our students. So that's, that's one thing that I've recognized uh, as a young student. Um, and you just learn to develop respect, you know, for, mm -hmm. for those individuals. Um, and I feel that is the culture um, that we have at the Catholic Academy. 
I agree. I agree. Thank you. So uh, one thing I wanted to go back to a little bit was you obviously have a, a wonderful uh, trajectory that you shared with us, starting with Kathy Academy Bridgeport, then going on to Fairfield Prep, an outstanding high school, going on to Fordham, an outstanding. Did you did you hear that? Oh, sorry. No, I did not. Uh, my. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Did you, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Did you feel like you were well prepared for high school? Like you had a great trajectory going from Catholic Academy to Fairfield Prep, which is an amazing high school, and then Fordham, an amazing university. Did you feel that your education really prepared you for that next step into Fairfield? Oh, yes. Yes. Um, I highly believe that, you know, if I did not attend St. Augustine, you know, the Catholic Academy, I doubt that I would be uh, at Fairfield Prep. Um, really? Yeah, I, I probably would have uh, moved to Georgia, you know, in all honesty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so the Catholic Academy definitely did prepare me for that opportunity. Um, you know, and, and, you know, Mrs. Donnelly really taught me to take advantage of the opportunities that are presented in front of me. And um, I had a great one, you know, um, um, as far as the education, I don't feel that, you know, there was a huge learning curve or anything of that nature. Um, it really was, was a smooth transition, you know, so I believe that the education that we offer um, is really top notch, you know, and even if a student were to go to Fairfield Prep, Littleton Hall, um, you know, any boarding school, I feel that they will exceed and, and do, do very well there. That's great. Um, I know we're going to have, we have some students on, on this, uh, on this web talk tonight. So I know that sometimes if you've been in, in your elementary school from preschool through eighth grade, or, you know, at St. Augustine, it's just these, you know, fourth through eighth, but they may have started it at uh, St. Raphael, you know, you're eager to sort of spread your wings and move on. You know, I always, I always said as the principal of a K to eight, that if, if kids didn't want to move on by the time they were in eighth grade, we had done something wrong. We want to, we want to give them the wings to sort of, to fly and move on. But, you know, I kind of want to go back to, you had mentioned that, um, you know, you really found that the, the religious environment, the faith formation, that, that focus on integrity was huge. Um, you, you know, do you, do you, uh, you know, even things like wearing, you know, wearing uniforms, things like that, you know, where, do, where do you feel like um, those little things that by the time you're in eighth grade, you might be sort of taking a huge sigh and rolling your eyes with, can you share with us how that might have, you know, what you've learned from that that might um, apply to to where you are now, the things that you maybe didn't appreciate in eighth grade that you mm -hmm. appreciate now? I definitely do appreciate the uniforms. You know, <laughs> I do um, too. <laughs> first and foremost, uh, buying war clothes is not cheap at I'm all. I'm telling you. You mm -hmm. know, um, but luckily in engineering, you know, oftentimes you're in an manufacturing environment where you could get away with you know jeans and boots for a couple of days but um but going back to you know my younger days um the uniforms you know they really helped show the sense of solidarity that um the you know students shared um it showed that you know everyone was on the same playing field you know no matter what mm -hmm. your background was everyone had to wear the same thing which which was great um yep. And it, I, I, I feel as though it really protects a student, you know, um, for those individuals that, you know, may have some financial hardships um, and, you know, may not, you know, afford the uh, newest pair of sneakers or, you know, a cool hat or whatever it may be, um, you know, they have this that they can fall back on, right. you know, so I think that that's great. Um, and as far as the religious aspect you know my teachers especially in my early years at St. Augustine from say kindergarten to fourth grade uh really made Jesus seem like a rock star you know right <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean everything he did was cool you know walking mm -hmm. water miracles and you know might even fly who knows <laughs> <laughs> um you know, so, so all of those stories, um, you know, from the Bible that we hear in our, you know, downplayed for kids, in a sense, um, really made it, you know, interesting and, you know, really worthwhile, you know, Relatable. to, yep, to um, actually allow, 
a spiritual figure to be a real role model um, there you, go, lives, yeah. you know which is mm -hmm. uh, something that I have taken for granted um, you know during my early years for sure because you don't fully realize what you're learning or or how that may apply to other aspects in life mm -hmm. um, but as I got older and you know especially going through fifth of prep and Fordham with the Catholic you know traditions continuing you know, every thing I've learned, the foundation started at St. Augustine, you know, and everything else was just the icing on the cake. <laughs> That's awesome. What, what would you say is your greatest accomplishment and how do you think um, your time at Catholic Academy of Bridgeport influenced that? My greatest accomplishment thus far in life, um, I will say maybe to just be the person that I am today. Um, you know, I, I try to be a great citizen, person of integrity. Um, I try to, you know, be the best um, friend I can be to anyone and to really um, do any role I have, you know, 100%. Um, and as a result of that, you know, there have been great benefits. You know, I don't have any student debt right now. You know, not many 23 year olds can say that. Um, no, I'm looking to buy my first home within the next few months. Um, great. you know, I'm able to serve my community, um, in a great way, you know, by affecting and influencing, um, our children, you know, which is the future. So mm -hmm. that's, that's, to me, that's the greatest impact that, um, I can have, you know, giving back to the community. Um, that's something that I very much so believe in, um, so yeah, that, that would be my greatest accomplishment. I think that's great. And I have to say, I love that, that your answer to that question wasn't something material. It wasn't um, <laughs> the car you drive or the, you know, the clothes that you're wearing, but rather that, that you're the best friend that you can be to people, the best brother that you can be. Um, if that doesn't typify what we're trying to help our students to know is that who you are and how you are is, is where everything else will stem from. All goodness will come, you know, come afterwards, but mm -hmm. being the best version of yourself is the greatest thing that you can do to thank God for your gifts, right? And, um, and then good things will, will follow and flow from that. And you're, I think you're a wonderful example of that, you know, that you put your emphasis on being the best person that you can be. And then you have this wonderful career and opportunity to buy a home and all of these things, mm -hmm. but that you're keeping your focus on that, which is most important, which is to, you know, be a light, you know, um, you know, be, be the, the heart and hands of Christ. Um, and you learned a little of that at the Catholic Academy through some of your, uh, you mentioned, um, I know we've talked before in many, many um, public engagements that we've done. You once ran down a typical day for yourself. Can you do that? Uh, what a typical day, because you, you actually volunteer quite a bit. You, mm -hmm. you know, Catholic Academy Bridgeport board is not the only place where you um, serve the community. So maybe you can run down some of the things that you have been doing with regards to service as well. Sure. Um, I also teach um, on the side. I teach for a nonprofit in Bridgeport called the SIMI Project. Um, it stands for uh, Stimulating Young Minds and Imagination. And the goal for that is to um, expose children to, you know, the sciences, the arts, um, some of the things that, that you know, I don't want to uh, say that the school system doesn't do well, but, um, you know, the public school system puts emphasis on certain things. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a way that, um, you know, we, we, we try to combat that, you know, through remedial learning, um, um, you know, to, to really give students a fighting chance, you know, mm -hmm. um, because we realize that not everyone can go to a private school and, you know, receive the best education, you know, in Bridgeport. Um, so, you know, this is my way to still say, Hey, if you want to be an engineer, you can yeah. do that. That's great. <laughs> Let me show you how. <laughs> That's great. That's <laughs> you know? great. Um, and I, and I try to break it down simple for the kids. Um, you know, in engineering, there's a couple of main departments, really quality manufacturing, and design, 
Mm -hmm. um, and I try to teach students, you know, to open up their minds, ex you know, and expand uh, their knowledge from what they know and to ask questions because that is, you know, how you will continue to learn. Beginning um, of learning is a question. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And, and teaching the students to ask the right questions mm -hmm. um, is, is crucial to not only their development, but for, you know, the, the goal of the program, which is to, you know, stimulate their minds, you know, and imagination. So Great. Um, that's one thing I do. Um, I also uh, taught for Upward Bound at Sacred Heart last summer. Um, things have fallen off a little bit, you know, due to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I taught um, an introductory class to mobile applications and uh, coding. So Great. That's, that's, that was a very fun time. Um, working with high schoolers um, can be tough. You know, some days are better than others, but overall it was a great experience. That's great. And you're a bit of an entrepreneur as well. You're exploring some business opportunities as well. I know that in terms of technology, putting all of your interests sort of together and, and focusing on new and exciting adventures as well. Yes. Yes. The um, entrepreneurial space is, you know, very fun to be in, in my opinion. Um, it's, it's something I do in my spare time. Um, you know, either all of that. All of that spare time. <laughs> all, all of my spare time. All 30 minutes of it. That's right. <laughs> um, you know, so whether it's working with my, you know, with, with some friends or, or by myself, um, you know, it's, it's fun to just brainstorm, ask mm -hmm. questions, and try to find the answers, you know. And if there is no answer, then you have a new product. Right, you know, right. Or, or you have, you know, a new service to offer the community. So, um, I do have a couple of app ideas. Um, you know, it's it's not cheap to create an app. Uh, so, you know, trying to be creative, um, but very excited for that. That's awesome. Um, and I am excited to dive into the real estate world as well. Gosh, good for you. Diversify, would you? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes, I, sometimes you have to double down, you know. <laughs> I understand. I do. Um, can you tell us uh, what lessons you've learned from your mentors that have changed your perspective and maybe who some of your mentors have been? Sure. Ooh, um, I have a lot of mentors. Uh, there are a lot of great people in my life, you know, that, that have, um, you know, poured in information, you know, in, into me. Um, so I am very thankful for that. Um, some of the, I guess, main things that I've taken away from my mentors are um, seize every opportunity, you know, um, and you don't know until you try. I think, you know, especially coming from Bridgeport, you know, being in the inner city where sometimes you may feel as though you're in a bubble, uh, especially as a young kid, um, you know, you sometimes feel that you're limited or, you know, I only have a set amount of options. Mm -hmm. you know, no, <laughs> once you you know, take a drive down I-95 or the Merritt Parkway, you know, the world really opens up and um, there is a lot out there for you. You just have to, one, be, you know, have the courage uh, first to take a step out and then two, uh, look and then three, just give things a try and then, you know, discern what you like, what you don't like, yeah. then that, you know, brings you closer to your purpose in life and also, you know, how you intend to support yourself and or your family in the future. That's great. Um, how do you live out? How do you live that out? That sees, sees every opportunity. You've shared a little bit of that with, you know, how you're sort of spreading your, uh, yourself, uh, you know, with all of your interests, um, you know, and share it with others. You know, obviously you're reaching out to the youth um, in your various ventures. Um, I'm kind of curious to hear your perspective um, on why you chose to be a board member. I mean, here you spent preschool through eighth grade at this school. <laughs> you know, you're out, you move on to high school, you're out and you come back. Mm -hmm. So what, what was your, uh, what was the impetus? What was the, um, what drew you back to the Catholic Academy of Bridgeport as an adult man to, to you know, to, to bring your gifts at the board level? Sure. Um, it was um, an easy decision, you know. Well, one, I didn't really know that 
St. Augustine or the Catholic Academy had a board to begin with. <laughs> you know, I, I thought it was just the executive director and, and you know, just the principals, mm -hmm. um, not realizing that there was a board. And, you know, once I was approached with the opportunity um, that I, you know, may or that, that I was under consideration, it was, you know, I was ecstatic, um, you know, being 22 at the time, um, you know, and a board member that's, for me, that's unheard of. Um, but just to have that mm -hmm. impact, you know, on the community, that's even better. You know, I can, you know, do something um, or, or help make a decision that will hopefully better the lives of about 900 students and our mm -hmm. faculty as well. Um, you know, and having that direct impact is what's important. Um, I realized that, you know, you do in society, you have to be a doer, but you can also kind of be at that, you know, nonprofit managerial level, uh, mm -hmm. which may, you know, even be better, you know, um, from my outreach, I can reach more people, you know, bring more kids into our school system, give our kids better, um, you know, resources just, you know, just by uh, reaching out to donors and, um, you know, people that provide major gifts. And, you know, it is my hope that one day I will be one of those people um, that can provide major gifts to the schools, um, you know, for, for new laptops or to um, benefit our faculty. That's great. And it's worth noting that this this very series was what was your brainchild. This was your idea to to pull alumni. That's one of the big areas where where you're helping us is to is to um, really galvanize our alumni. And and um, it's a it's a it's a wonderful community of of people who have have this history to share. And so this was a this was a great again you know not someone to let moss grow beneath your feet. You reached out and said, hey, here's an idea. And we thought that was great. So we and we're very much appreciative of all of your amazing contributions. Um, you know, success can be quantified in different categories, you know, career success, um, academic success, personal success. Um, could you maybe share with us what you feel like your, your best success was in each of those areas, what your career success has been, what your academic success, your, maybe your greatest achievement academically, and then your personal, um, success and, um, you know, maybe where you, where you feel that, um, the Catholic Academy influenced that? Sure. Um, I will start off with my personal success uh, since I've touched on that earlier. Um, simply just being the best version of yourself. You know, I always ask myself if I know I can do better, should I? <laughs> you know, <laughs> darn it. Sometimes the answer is yes. <laughs> Correct. Correct. So if the answer is yes, then well, I have some work to do. Right. You know, you know, that's where I've learned to make a sacrifice and you know, do things either for the greater good or for the betterment of myself. Um, so mm -hmm. that's something that I'm happy that I am aware of at a, at a young age. Um, and I'm able to apply that, you know, in my life, um, you know, to this day. So uh, personally, that's something that I'm very um, proud of myself uh, for doing. Um, <clears throat> Career-wise, I'm proud of myself for being an engineer. You know, there's, there's just not that many engineers in the world. Um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Connecticut isn't, you know, known for being an engineering state whatsoever. Um, so being an engineer in Connecticut for myself means a lot, you know, um, I do feel, um, unique in that way that I chose, you know, to have a career path, you know, and not just a job. You right. Know, that, that's something that I try to share with, um, you know, the, the st students that I have taught and the kids that I continue to reach out to, you know, you don't have to just have a job, you know, you can mm -hmm. have a career with a career track, you know, certain promotions and levels that you can always reach towards so that you don't stay complacent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, nothing wrong with being comfortable, but, you know, again, if you can do better, should you? <laughs> right, right. <Yes>. Good point. <laughs> um, and the last one was spirit. Academic. Yeah. Oh. Aqu oh, although I like that. We're going to add a fourth. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Academically, um, simply making it through Fordham uh, engineering. Yeah. Um, so Fordham, so the Fordham sciences are not very known. They're not ranked, you know, whatsoever. 
Um, it's our business school that people know of, mm. you know, it's our business school that's, you know, top 50 in the country. Um, so <clears throat> because of that, our STEM teachers try to, uh, or they've made it hard <laughs> in a good way, you know, they, right, right. they really challenged us and, um, you know, made it so that we really come out as engineers that can actually contribute and add value to whatever industry that we go into. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that's why I did, you know, such a well job at Hubble Heaters when I first started there and received a promotion. Um, you know, so yeah, graduating with an engineering degree uh, while being a student athlete, um, it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. uh, certainly doable. You know, I was one of one of two engineers on the whole football team during my four. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Actually, that's that's a huge commitment <laughs> on both sides. Huge commitment on both sides. Correct. So, um, you know, doing that was um, a huge accomplishment. Yeah, it sure was. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I'm going to give folks an opportunity to ask some questions here in a little bit. But I guess the last question I'd like to ask you is, uh, for our students that, that might be uh, on this talk or will have a chance to watch the recording later, um, you know, this is a tough time to be an eighth grader. You know, all, all the plans for, for graduation and all those special things that we have planned for them have, have really been turned on their ear a little bit. Um, but they are going to graduate. They are going to, you know, go on to these great high schools and do wonderful things. Um, what parting words do you have for our middle schoolers? Um, in terms of your experience, what, what, what words of advice would you give to them? Um, first and foremost, I just want to say congratulations to all of the eighth graders um, in all of 2020, no matter what state you're in. Right. <laughs> this, is, this is certainly um, a different time, you know, once in a lifetime mm -hmm. type of thing. Um, so kudos to you for just sticking through this, you know, the whole virtual learning um, and still staying on top of your schoolwork. Um, you know, I, I know it's tough at this age uh, to be distracted, you know, and to feel as though virtual learning is optional. It's not. Thank you, <laughs> you for know, saying that. It's, it's, it's your education. <laughs> it's important. Absolutely. Yep. Um, it's, it's your education, you know, take it into your own hands and really, um, you know, continue to excel. Uh, because online, you know, learning, um, like, like for myself, that's how I'm getting my master's de degree in business. So, you know, get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and it really just sees, sees all of the opportunities that you have, you know, um, go through a phase of trial and error, you know, do mm -hmm. things that you may not like, do things that you like, you know, and really build your foundation as a person. So that during your tough days, you know, in life, um, if you're ever, you know, upset or you're facing um, a mental illness such as depression or anxiety, mm -hmm. you can have things that comfort you at the end of the day. So that's what I challenge you to do. That's wonderful. Thank you. I'd love to give uh, our attendees an opportunity to ask some questions of Tony. Um, and you don't have to be one of the students. You could be anybody. Uh, <laughs> Oops, let me just make sure I'm in here. Um, so let's see, I'm seeing some some little bubbles, but we'll see if we have anybody pop in a question here. Yep. Um, Any and all questions, I'm an open book. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, while you guys are thinking of your questions, um, um, so I'm curious, what, what made you choose to get your master's in business? Um, I believe it's the perfect, so I'm trying to craft myself to be the perfect employee or, mm. or, or the perfect um, worker, whether it's for someone else or for myself, um, and having an engineering mindset while also the business acumen to supplement that um, is a powerful force, you know, so if I can ask the right questions, know how to launch a product to market, you know, mm. logistically, mm -hmm. Um, while still, you know, either making profit or, or, or adding revenue, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's as capitalism and as America as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very true. Very true. So, um, you know, but, but at the end of the day, um, it's, it's good for myself to, um, 
I, I did this per personally as a challenge for myself to um, get into a program or to a school without the influence of sports. Um, you know, mm. having, having someone just look at, um, you know, my portfolio, my, you know, my academics, what I've done, you know, right. off, off the field to determine, um, you know, my, my eligibility to get into a school. So um, that's something I'm happy. Um, yeah, that's so impressive, Tony. It, you, you, you so walk the walk of uh, when you say that you really you want to challenge yourself. Is there something more that, you know, I can be doing to, to you know, that's a perfect, you, you've kind of, you, you kind of encapsulated it there, which is to say, you know, you know, you're a talented athlete, you knew that you, but you also know that you're an intelligent, talented scholar. And so, you know, you wanting to just kind of put yourself out there in that regard um, and say, you know, I just want, I want to be judged on a different set of merits sure. um, is really impressive. So we have a question. Um, Hi, Tony, I'm a future Fairfield prep freshman. Yay. Do you have any advice and how was your experience? Great question. Um, Let's see, for Fairfield Prep, um, go in there with an open mind. There are so many clubs to join. There's literally a club for almost anything you can imagine. There's even a video game club, you know, so. Uh, Don't tell my son that. Yeah, <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be a good time for sure. Um, but in order to get the full experience from Fairfield Prep, you definitely have to be involved, you know, um, Yes, from 8.30 till 2.30, uh, you know, that's, that's a time where you learn, take it seriously. Uh, but after 2.30, that's where, you know, you really start to build your foundations for, you know, what you like, what you don't like, who you are as a person, you know, and that's really where um, you build a bond with, with your friends. So that's what I encourage. Just do everything. Uh, if it fits your schedule, stay after school. <laughs> for you we have another question it's a great one i think can you speak to the role of parental activity and involvement in your education so um and the school environment um how how involved were your parents and and you know what you think how you think parents should be involved in their children's education especially as they're getting older and and really sort of pushing the the envelope of their own independence mm -hmm. um you know what is the role that a parent should take um so I grew up in a single family household. Um, my father lives in Atlanta, Georgia with my other siblings. So it's myself and my mother here in Bridgeport. Um, <clears throat> so growing up, you know, I've, I've had a great, you know, ch childhood and my parents are great, even though they are divorced. Um, you know, my father was still very much so in my life. And I thank him for that. Um, but, you know, first the parent has to make the decision to allow the kid to go to the school mm -hmm. you know that's that's step one and to figure out some sort of you know financial game plan decision and sacrifice right correct both correct. yeah and you know this is a true investment um um you know for for your son or daughter um and really just allow them to enroll into the school and just give them a chance, you know, see, again, see what they think, see if they like it, see if they don't like it, and um, realize, you know, the benefits that come about from going to the Catholic Academy of, of Bridgeport. We have four, four campuses. Um, our teachers are outstanding. You know, they will happily answer any questions that you may have, um, but I just encourage you to allow the teachers to do their job uh, to support the faculty members, um, you know, everything they do is for a reason, um, you know, and, and that reason is to help your child uh, succeed and, and to push them uh, because mm -hmm. complacency nowadays um, does not, you know, it's, it's not rewarding. <laughs> right, right. And for kids to recognize that their parents still have a role in their, in their, in their lives. That's, you know, we, we refer in Catholic education that parents are the first teachers and we really want to honor that. We have another great question. Uh, what was your hardest subject to pass and why, and how did you overcome those challenges? My hardest subject ironically was always math. Um, was it? <laughs> yep. Especially once I got into high school and into college, um, you know, you know, starting off with uh, algebra, you know, it's like, oh, you know, not bad. Move up to geometry, algebra two, and then calculus, you know, mm -hmm. and, I, and I thought that was it, you know, I was like, all right, that's, <laughs> that's a lot of math. 
And then I go, That's a lot of math. Yep. Then I go into college and get into multivariable calculus one, multivariable <laughs> calculus two, you know, uh, <laughs> statistics for physics, you know, so uh, yeah, definitely those, those are the tough classes. Um, um, I've actually failed a class um, before in college at Fordham. It was fluid, fluid mechanics. Um, very tough course. Um, I'm not ashamed to say that I failed. Um, but I still graduated, so it's it possible. It sounds <laughs> difficult. Fluid mechanics? Fluid mechanics. Good it, Lord. It's, it's <laughs> basically um, the study of fluids, gases, and you know any liquid, really. Wow. Um, very tough. Wow. All right. Another question. How did your parents feel about your education path, and were they happy about this uh, education at St. Augustine? They were very happy uh, with both my education path and the education at St. Augustine. Um, my mother actually wanted to keep me in the school um, for, you know, as long as possible. We actually moved to New Haven um, at one point and she would drive me down to Bridgeport every day just so that I can attend St. Augustine still because of the value that it created in, um, in, in my life. So wow. um, that's a true testament, you know, to the education. Um, and, um, you know, it turned out well, you know, again, take advantage of the opportunity if it's in front of you. Great. Another question we have is, what would you say to student athletes? I think you started to answer this already, but what would you say to student athletes who are mostly interested in, or only interested in playing the sport, interested in playing the classroom? Hmm. Great question. Um, we might. All right, we're just gonna see if we can check this here. Okay. Yep. Okay. I had you sorry. frozen there for a sec. Go sorry ahead. about that. I did no, another okay. question. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you you cannot you know play a sport um, really um, if your grades you know do not meet certain criteria. Um, for example, at Fairfield Prep, um, if you had a C in any class um our coach would not let you play you know mm. he will have you go to extra tutoring and then come to practice late oh wow with, with the expectation that um you will you know enhance your grades um you know and and even at fordham um you know co colleges are big into statistics um and uh at fordham we were out of all the sports, uh, the, the football team actually was the sport that um, had the average weighted GPA of a 3.0 or above um, out of all the sports. Is that right? Yep. So, um, you know, they're, they're, it's, it's important at the end of the day. You know, uh, sports are there to only take you so far. Um, I use sports as my golden ticket uh, to, you know, get, get a scholarship to a great institution. Um, but, you know, I did not have <clears throat> aspirations to play in the NFL or anything of that nature. Um, it was, you know, simply uh, a transaction. It was your stepping, it was your stepping <laughs> stone. Gotcha. Yeah. And you knew that going into it? That was something you knew you? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yep. So, um, you know, if, if, if you have a great talent, uh, again, leverage it. Use it to the best of your ability. Um, you know, football is actually not my favorite sport. Basketball is. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. But I was cut from the basketball team when um, my sophomore year, <clears throat> we had a 7-2 transfer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's hard to compete with. <laughs> correct. Who went on to play for Syracuse University. So, oh, right yep. So, you know, I said, you know, that's completely fair. He can take my spot. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it all, right? Correct. So, um, you know, you sports as an as a means to get to your goal. That's great. And we have another another question from our uh, our soon to be um, Fairfield Prep freshman. He says, "I'm planning to play football and focus on academics. Good job. And I feel like it's going to be hard to focus on both. So, what multitasking advice would you give?" It's a great question. Great question. Um, I would say 
um, you know, it's, it's something that I've done myself. Um, it is doable, you know, millions of other individuals do it as well. Um, but, in, but, you know, for fearful prep, it's important to know that there are resources out there to help you. Um, practice typically doesn't start until th about three or three fifteen, so you do have some buffer room to, um, you know, either go to extra help or to do some homework, and really make use of your free periods that you have every day. Um, you know, that'll be huge for uh, your success, um, and I highly encourage that you, you know, just stay proactive. You know. Um, the skills and time management that you've learned now, you know, at the Catholic Academy doesn't go out the window just because, you know, you're in a different building. Mm -hmm. um, continue to practice your time management and always keep your education at the forefront. Um, know that your friends uh, from Bridgeport may not have the same homework that you do or the same, you know, type of, um, urgency to get things done so don't be afraid to you know um uh be the eagle in the sky you know flying mm -hmm. alone um because you'll remain at the top you know don't don't be uh, a pigeon so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> and you know would you agree i think that it's important for for people and certainly young people to understand that nobody nobody succeeds alone it is okay to get help it is okay to, to get help from parents, from other friends, from your teachers. I think sometimes young people think that success means that you um, are so proficient that you're able to just go and do it all by yourself. Correct. So I really loved hearing <laughs> that, yeah, you failed a class, that your hardest class was the, you know, your hardest subject was the essential subject of your major. <laughs> um, I think that's really wonderful because uh, I think, you know, Im implied there is that you needed to take advantage of the resources at your disposal, um, whether those were your teachers or, you know, friends who might be good at the subject, you, you have study sure. groups, those kinds of things. Um, so don't, don't think like, you know, don't feel like you have to do it by yourself, whether it's sports mm -hmm. or academics, if there's something that you need to be working on, there's somebody there willing to help you with it. And that, and that's Correct. no failure. Correct. Correct. It's, it's a failure to not get the help that you need. Right. You know, if, if you know you're struggling, um, and if, if you know that, or, or if a teacher knows that if you simply stayed after class, you know, um, for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Just to simplify some things for you, you know, yes. take, take that 10 or 15 minutes that it may be, mm -hmm. um, and it may really open up your eyes. And, and good students ask questions. Good Correct. students ask questions. Um, it, it's, I think there really is, again, this, this feeling that if, if you're a good student, that means you understand it the first time it was thrown out at you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, you know, good students ask questions and, and don't be fooled by looking around the room and thinking that because nobody else is asking questions, that means they know it, Correct. you know, follow your own path, ask the questions you need to ask. Um, because, uh, that, that really makes students stand out. We have another great question for you, Tony. How important do you think it is to be resourceful? It's a great question. It is very important to be resourceful. Um, again, going back to doing the simple things as far as just, um, you know, staying after school, being resourceful means, you know, you are aware of what your surroundings offer <clears throat> and you are aware of how your surroundings may help you, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, not only key to education, but it's, it's a real life skill at the end of the day. Um, you know, that's why we have grocery stores, you know, <laughs> so that you don't right. have to <laughs> farm or, you know, and, <laughs> and to crop your own food. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, again, be resourceful, make things easier for yourselves um, and really streamline things. Um, you know, um, there are a ton of people in your lives that, you know, may be able to help you out, um, whether it's something simple or something complex. Mm -hmm. um, again, ask those questions to the individuals that you trust, um, you know, to, to any of the board members, um, any of the faculty, um, students know that you, you do have a resource and it's, it's our job to give you what you need to succeed. So, um, that's, that's my job. <laughs> so, so do not be afraid to simply ask the question if you need anything. Agreed. 
Well, we are, uh, we're actually, this is perfect timing. We're, we're wrapping right up here, uh, pulling right up on, on an hour. Um, so I think we'll, we'll probably wrap up here, but, um, you know, Tony, you were one of the very first people I met when I, when I took on this job, uh, around this time last year. And I have, uh, had such a, it's been such a pleasure having a lot of the, the, public engagements that you and I have done together, um, getting to know you as an individual. And I'm so grateful for what you provide as a member of our board, as my boss. And I'm not just saying that because you're one of my bosses, but because <laughs> I really and truly believe that you are, uh, uh, you're a real gift to our organization. And I hope um, that our students who are seeing this and parents who might be on um, can see that um, this is, uh, you know, you're, you're a wonderful example of somebody who has taken advantage of everything that the school has you know, um, attempted to provide um, and seen a, a tremendous amount of success. And so we're excited to to continue with this, this Hometown Heroes series. Um, if you have a, a, a CAB alum who you think would be a wonderful um, a person to, to be interviewed, please reach out to our business office, reach out to uh, the school. We'd be happy to pass that person along to Tony so that we can um, widen our widen our net and um, continue to help our students to realize how many really wonderful, again, resources. And that's what this is attempting to be. It's we're really trying to be a resource to you um, to see what your future could look like, to see yourself in, in Tony's shoes um, or one of our many other wonderful uh, alum that are out there that are doing just amazing things, amazing things. And we're so, so very proud of them. So I thank you for not only being our first guest, Tony, but, but the, like I said, the, the person who birthed this entire idea. Um, I think it's a wonderful one and I think it's gonna be very valuable to our students and parents. So thank you thank for you. always giving of yourself to us. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate your kind words. Um, you know, you've been great thus far during your tenure at uh, the Catholic Academy. So we're very fortunate to have someone like you at, at the leadership position. So thank you. Yep. So. Well, thank you. Great. It's a well, team, isn't it? Oh yeah. All right, everyone. Again, thank you so much. We're going to be. We've recorded this session, and we'll be sharing it uh, out with everyone. But uh, oh, I, I see one message here. I just want to make sure we get <laughs> that in. Thank um, you, so Susan. if you have questions, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. In the meantime, we pray everyone remain healthy um, and we will your hometown hero session. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Right. Thank you. Stay safe See and you, healthy. Everyone. Be safe. Stay home. <laughs>